This is a bit of a reminder of what happens when phage infects cells. So crudely drawn here is a phage particle, a bacteriophage, in which there is a circular recombinant phage DNA. The red is the insert, the black is the original phage DNA, and it has been packaged into a phage particle that's infectious. So when it actually gloms on to, say, an E. coli cell, the infection can proceed. So let's see what happens. The circular molecule of DNA gets into the cell. That circular molecule is ready to be replicated, and the replication of these phage produces linear DNA molecules that do not circularize. So the new phage that are about to be made in this cell are going to be packaged in the cell with newly translated phage coat proteins, as linear DNA in this fashion. The cell replicates loads and loads of viruses. Now this infected cell is doomed when the cell gets chock-a-block full of these viral particles, each one containing linearized phage DNA with one or another insert. They're going to lyse the cell. They're going to burst the cell open and out come the phage. So what happens in a petri dish is you have a lawn of bacteria shown here as a bright yellow onto which you have poured some of these phage that you have packaged. And what will happen is what you saw on the last slide to each uh, cell that gets infected. And then the phage that are released infect the adjacent cells. And this process just keeps happening until what is a, a lawn of bacterial cells is peppered with clear spots representing burst open or lysed cells. And these are called plaques. Each plaque will be derived from a single phage that happened to land on the lawn of bacteria, infect one cell, and then progressively infect cells around that one cell until you got a clearing in the lawn of E. coli cells on this plate. At this point, we'll do things that are very like what we did in cDNA cloning. Each plaque represents a single recombinant molecule of DNA that was in that original virus. And so if you have enough plaques, enough different plaques, you have what's called a representative genomic library. You have a library containing, ultimately, all of the genomic fragments that you could generate by doing this kind of cloning.